Um, I appreciate that this is, this is a true honor to be doing this interview with you. Uh, and first, congratulations for, uh, for your new album that is finally out. There's been delayed twice thanks to the pandemic. Was the pandemic the only reason or there was some other reasons for it? No, 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 no. There were a lot of other reasons. Uh, actually, it felt a little bit like somebody didn't want us to get the record finished. Um, it was, uh, we had basically problems in everything, in like basically everything that we have been doing during the recording and the production process of the record. And uh, so many, so, so big problems that threw us back for weeks each, you know. Uh, I mean, when we started doing the drum recordings, uh, I had to go to the music store like five days in a row because something w broke down, like microphones and stuff. I mean, he even broke his right cymbal. Uh, you, don't, you normally don't do that. Um, we had problems with the power grid in the studio later on that couldn't be solved. Um, then I had problems with the mixing sessions. Uh, so I basically, after In the Dawn of the AI was already released, um, I had to remix everything from scratch again. Uh, because I couldn't uh, open the session anymore and it's virtually impossible to get back to the same sound. Uh, but uh, yeah, we managed to do it somehow anyway. And um, yeah, I mean, of course, like, I mean, when the pandemic started, it was already, uh, we were already cynical, like doing like, ah, well, and a worldwide pandemic, what else? Um, and that, of course, uh, prevented us as well from shooting the videos at the locations where we wanted uh, or work with the people that we wanted and stuff like that. It was, uh, it was pretty difficult, uh, actually, to get everything managed. But now it's finally done and it will be finally out now on Friday. It seems really that someone didn't want it to come out. <laughs> yeah, it felt, it almost felt, I mean, I don't believe in stuff like that, but Uh, it really felt as if uh, some evil powers <laughs> didn't want us to get this thing finished, yes. Um, Final Days is a conceptual album. Can you tell uh, the story behind it, please? Uh, it's not, uh, not, no, not a real concept record. Um, as for Arden Ogan, we always have records that have like the same theme throughout the record. Um, and with Gunman, for example, the last record, it was pretty easy. We were writing the first two songs and they sounded a little bit like Wild West. So we were like, okay, then let's do a Wild West record. And for this one, it's uh, basically, yeah, a dark science fiction sort of concept, but uh, there is not, not, not a full story going on. I mean, when we started doing that, we, we had the idea to make uh, every song about one possible scenario that, that mankind will go down. And uh, so the first thing we wrote was in the dawn of the AI, uh, talking about art an artificial intelligence um, taking control. And uh, then there was this song, uh, It Is Over, that is about an asteroid impact on Earth. And actually, we all we uh, decided to not release uh, the song that is about the killer virus. We actually wrote one in 2019. So <laughs> that uh, wouldn't have been appropriate right now. And um, yeah, but it's not, it's not, not everything is, is about this. What I really like is to take a semantic field, like a field of words that are somehow connected to the theme and uh, then build metaphors out of that. There is, for example, is a song called Black Hole. I mean, when you hear the word black hole, then you obviously think about space and, uh, you know, like stars and science fiction, maybe, uh, maybe spaceships and stuff. Um, but actually, the song is about uh, the feeling that that the weight of your own depression is dragging you down to the ground. And uh, I really love doing stuff like that, like like using words that seem to to say one thing, but actually mean something totally different. Also, like uh, the heart of the Android, um, where people uh, thought it is about the question if a machine or a program can develop a personality once it's uh, sophisticated enough. But actually, it's about a guy or a girl uh, that has the impression that he, that he or she just has to function. Uh, and uh, it's just expected that, it, that he or she uh, functions like a machine, you know. And uh, it's uh, yeah, actually not the life that this person wants to live. And I really uh, love doing that. I think this is a big part of the fun, especially when, when fans are coming to you like after the shows and be like, ah! Oh, I finally understood what this song is about after all these years. It's a, uh, it's a uh, big fun for me. Yeah. Uh, no one will get it. <laughs> I, I think a lot of pers a lot of people actually really get it. Uh, the thing is, it's like with, with everything else, you really have to, you really have to sit down and uh, mm -hmm. focus on the lyrics. I mean, 
there are a lot of uh, metal bands out there that have like these uh, yeah swords dragons and fantasy uh, fantasy lyrics and there's nothing wrong with that uh, but i personally uh, really like to dive a little bit deeper um, and i really love these moments when when people understand stuff for example there's this uh, this uh, song from uh, rammstein uh, called sonne you know sun uh, in english i don't know if you the, the i think you know the band uh, yes, but I don't know the band. Yeah, and uh, sorry, what? You don't know the band? I do know the band, but yeah. I'm not very familiarized with their sound. No, I'm 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 not either. But uh, there is this song called Sonne, and I was uh, thinking for for weeks when I heard that song, what what the hell is this one about? Uh, un until I finally understood that it is about a boxing match. You know, <laughs> it was like, what the you know. In that moment, if you understand it, it's it's amazing. It's like if you understand the universe for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I really like that. Okay. Um, your lyric on Vibe has been really varied throughout your career. Yet it was uh, really uh, based on past stories, like Gunman is set on the, the Far West. Um, but this is about a futuristic theme. Uh, why did you change it, the themes? Uh, we always uh, ch uh, changed the theme, uh, the themes from rec uh, from record to record, basically. And um, I think this is a big part of the fun. Um, I mean, there are a lot of uh, like one themed bands out there nowadays that really stick with their one thing. Um, and it it becomes boring after some time. I, it, for me, totally, it would would get super boring uh, after a while. And uh, I think this is big, big fun uh, for for the fans of Orden Organ as well, because they never really know what's coming. You know, I mean, we also we have very dark, very hard songs. We have very melancholic songs. We have also songs that that are a little bit funny. You know, at times stuff like that as well. So um, you can you can really never know. And uh, I mean, uh, it is basically. I mean, if you if you want to compare it with another like like huge band. Uh, then you could maybe say like Iron Maiden did the same, you know. They also did Power Slave and Somewhere in Time and stuff like that. So they always also changed uh, the theme, and uh, I really liked that. Uh, that was one of the things that I really liked about Iron Maiden, uh, that they always uh, changed uh, the the theme and the scenery as well. Mm -hmm. um, is the sound going in Final Days? Is the sound going to uh, sound more futuristic as the lyrics? Um, I mean, <clears throat> when we did Gunman, for example, it was simple because there is something like a Wild West sound, like harmonies and melodies yeah. and stuff like that. It was, uh, there is nothing like that for science fiction. So the only thing that you can basically do is work with effects. And uh, we did that a lot on that record. Um, we, we had a lot of vocal glitches in Out of the Android, for example. We worked with the vocoder that is a vocal synthesizer that sounds like if you're singing like a robot, you know, stuff like that. Um, there are also, yeah, sound effects and dubstep uh, sounds and, and stuff like that. And there's actually a ton of it on the record, uh, but a lot of it is just very well hidden in the mix. You will just get it and understand it and be able to hear it uh, when you listen with headphones and have listened to the record a lot of times. Some of these things are really apparent, so really, really uh, jump out, and others are really well hidden, and I really, really like that. You know, like if you... That I think this is also like a big part of the fun. If you listen to the record for the twentieth time, and there's still something that you can discover, you know, I, I think this is those are the best records. Yeah, this really brings value. Yeah. yeah. Um, you uh, decided to invite two guests to play in the album. Uh, can you uh, explain what you were expecting to get from them in each song? Okay, I mean, the thing is, I really have to start at another point. Um, I mean, I am doing Orden Organ because this is my thing, you know. This is the music I love. This is what comes out out of me, you know, what I really want to do. It's always just about the music. I mean, Orden Organ has gotten pretty big meanwhile, and uh, we earn a, a bit of money with that and make our living from that, and so that it, all of that is fine. Um, but I never s thought that Orden Organ or never viewed Orden Organ as a, as a commercial product, if that makes any sense for you, you know? So I'm, I'm not doing that to make any money. And it is basically the same approach when it also comes to guests, for example. It was never about finding the biggest names or, or do name dropping or stuff. It was always about what can a guy or a girl bring to the table? So who is the best for the job, you know? 
And um, I mean, with Gus G, I don't think we have to talk about that because yeah. he's obviously <laughs> one of the best guitar players in the world. Um, and this actually uh, happened uh, just because of a joke. I mean, we had some problems with our former guitar player, Toby, who is now uh, has left the band uh, for a very long vacation right now. And um, so in the, in the beginning, we were basically just kidding around saying like, oh, yeah, maybe we should bring somebody else in to, to, to play the guest solos. Yeah? And uh, yeah, our, our guitar player, Niels, he was just uh, uh, kidding, saying, yeah, I can ask guests because they have been on tour together. And so I think between that moment and the final solo, there were just a couple of days. And it sounds stupid when I say that, but I mean, obviously, it's a big honor for us and uh, we love what he put on there you know it was to absolutely out of the question in that moment when he said i can ask gus then we said yes of course do it let's do that you know um so that what was one thing and uh, ilva erickson um the song alone in the dark we knew from the beginning that it was written from two different perspectives and uh, so we knew we had to bring in a girl for the second verse and the second chorus. And there were a lot of names thrown around and we were talking and thinking about who could do that. And uh, I think one of the AFM guys uh, suggested uh, her because uh, Brothers of Metal are also with AFM Records. And uh, I had met her briefly and also have seen the band live and I just listened back to uh, a couple of their songs. And I just thought to myself, if she does that with like a real fragile, low, melancholic voice, that could be the perfect fit. And it was, you know, like when she sent back the uh, when she sent back the tracks, uh, I was uh, totally blown away. I don't think that any singer in the world could have done that better, like differently. OK, uh, but I think she she nailed it like totally. That, that's like the perfect take uh, for the song. Uh, you already mentioned your lineup. It's in total revolution. For for example, you no longer play guitars. Uh, Niels Lufer no longer plays bass. You got two new members. What led to this revolution? <clears throat> it's actually not as difficult uh, as it sounds uh, when when you uh, when you look at it chrono chronologically. Um, I broke my thumb in 2018 or 19. I'm not not really sure. And it was like two weeks before the first show, so I couldn't play guitar on stage. And uh, we were thinking about if we cancel the shows, but we love playing live and we really wanted to do it. So Niels, who was our bass player back then, he obviously went from bass to guitar. That was the obvious choice. He's an amazing guitar player. So that was totally out of the question. So we did the first couple of shows um, without bass and uh, just with him on the guitar and me just singing. And people seem to like it so much, the audience, our crew. I mean, I myself, I really, I, I was never, I always loved playing guitar, but it was still even better to just run around singing because you can interact with the people more and, and talk more bullshit and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, so we really decided to keep it like that. I mean, even the Power Wolf guys came to us uh, after the, uh, the show in Summer Breeze and were like, you should really leave it like that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, yes, okay. And yeah, as for the bass player, so we had to bring in a bass player then. And um, I think that was, uh, I, I don't think that in the history of heavy metal, there has been a choice that, that would have gone easier. Um, because we were just thinking who could do that and we were all like, oh, Stephen, yes, okay, yeah, maybe I give Stephen a call. I gave Stephen a call and Stephen was like, yeah, okay, I will come over. <laughs> and that was it, you know, like totally unenthusiastic um, because, I mean, Stephen is the former bass player of Xandria, so like this female-fronted symphonic band, you might know them yeah. as well. And uh, we have been on tour together. He's a super nice guy, fits right in, likes the music, amazing bass player, beast on stage. And like I said, one of the nicest guys on the planet. So um, that was uh, that was absolutely out of the question. It was absolutely clear for everyone involved that that has to be the guy, you know. And it was the same for him because Alexandria were, uh, are inactive right now. Nobody really knows what's going on. And uh, so he was like, oh, I will end up in Orden Ogan anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I will. he was thinking to himself, I will end up in Orden Ogan anyway, so I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that was that. 
Um, so to this point, it was actually pretty easy. And the only thing that is like the real lineup change is that uh, our guitar player Toby had some yeah, personal things going on in his life from 2018 on that uh, made us feel like it might be necessary that there will be a change uh, because he was not able to do everything anymore in the way that he really wanted to do. And so it was um, a mutual decision from, from both uh, sides that he will go on a vacation. And this led us to uh, another problem because it, is, uh, it was pretty diff difficult actually to think about somebody who could, who could do that um, because... Um, I mean, on the one hand, I mean, it's not, not exactly progressive technical death metal what we play, but it's still pretty tough on guitar, you know? It's not easy. Uh, and especially when you play uh, the stuff that he does with his super fast shredding stuff, you really have to be pretty good already on your instrument uh, to be able to do that. And the other thing is, I mean, we're a full-time touring band. Um, and also, um, like maybe even the most important thing, uh, is that, I mean, everyone in Orden Ogan is like super down to earth and super relaxed. These are some of the nicest people you will ever meet in your whole life. I, I promise um, there's no ego bullshit going on. You know, everyone always in a good mood. And uh, it's like, uh, it's really great. Like also with the crew and it's everything's always in harmony, you know, like you have nobody that is like doing weird, weird things. And um so we were really thinking about who could do that and because he would like have to fit in on a personal level and there was actually nobody coming to our mind. And then there was a friend of mine who called me and said, uh, you should give uh, Patrick Sperling a, um, a call. And I was like, okay, what is it with the guy? And he just said, yeah, he looks like a young version of Zach Wild. He plays like a young version of Zach Wild. He is living... So it was the obvious choice. Yeah, no, he, and, and then also he's 30 minutes from your place. He loves Orden Ogan. He's a guitar teacher, so we can go on tour. And he's uh, one of the nicest guys that you will ever meet. And I was like, okay, this sounds like winning the lottery. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I gave him a call. And the first thing that Patrick does is he's laughing at me. Uh, and I'm like, okay, why are you laughing? And he just said, ah, don't think I'm a weirdo or something. But uh, I was somehow expecting this call to come at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was like, okay, then you know what the question is. And he was like, yes, and I'm in. And that was basically it. And uh, so, yes, uh, maybe this is even the strongest version of Orden Ogan that we've had so far. Yeah. Uh, besides the vocals, you are also in charge of the production. Uh, yeah. Does Final Days uh, keep your uh, powerful sound to the tradition? Uh, sorry, what? Days this album keeps your um, tradition of uh, uh, mixing and mastering with uh, power uh, with um, a powerful sound. Yeah, I think actually it is uh, the best sounding record I've done so far. Um, not even uh, not even the best sounding for Orden Ogan, but I think the best sounding record that I've done in general in my studio. Um, um, I mean, I'm I'm working um, apart from Orden Ogan full time as a producer as well. So I've, I've been working with bands like uh, Rap City of Fire, Brainstorm, Riot, Ross the Boss, Asphyx, to name a few. And um, so, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm always putting a lot of effort into that, but I really think that Final Days, it's, I mean, it's always a matter of taste, but it uh, turned out to be like really huge sounding, like super fat. And uh, I think we always, uh, during the production, we always went the extra mile on the extra mile. Um, you know, there, there are some, some th certain things that you can do to, to be like 0.5% like better or something. And we always did everything like absolute. We always tuned everything to absolute perfection, you know. And I think this is really, in the end, it really sums up and that gives it like the 5 or 10% more than everything else that I've ever done. Uh, in the, um, the version of the album, you got a DVD from uh, your tour. Why did you decide to include it? I think we always basically had a, a bonus DVD <clears throat> coming with the digipacks. So it's uh, some sort of a tradition, actually. Meanwhile, yeah, I think it started with East Nope in 2010. No, uh, no, 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 no. I don't think I'm not sure. I really I would really have to look it up. Uh, but at least from uh, to the end in 2012, we started doing that. 
and had, uh, I think, like two Wacken shows and a Summer Breeze show and something like that uh, as a bonus. So, yeah, like I said, it's some sort of a tradition. Um, and also, <clears throat> we had this last show of the Gunman touring cycle um, that was... Um, we did that in a saloon of a uh, adventure park, you know, like a where you can yeah. go with your with your kids and stuff. Yeah, and uh, we also did some parts of the filming of the Gunman video in this saloon in this adventure park, and uh, also did actually the drum recordings for Gunman in that uh, in that saloon uh, because we just wanted to go something else and don't record it in, in my studio, uh, just because why not. <laughs> So we thought we'd do a Wild West record and, yeah, okay, so we can also record the drums in a real saloon. And uh, that was nice. And uh, so, yeah, as there was a lot of uh, history to this place for us already, we thought it might be the perfect place to do the final show uh, there of this uh, touring cycle. And so far until now, it seems that is the, the, the final show of Orden Ogan ever. I mean, in general speaking, we didn't, sp uh, we didn't play live uh, anymore after that. And uh, we recorded that with a couple of cameras because the, the location is like very special and the audience was great that night. And uh, so we decided to, to put that on the bonus DVD. Um, I mean, especially right now, as people are yeah, at home and uh, cannot can't go to shows, yeah. can, cannot go to shows. I, I think this is uh, like a great memory for the people that have, that have been there. And it's also maybe great for people who really love to go to shows. Uh... To September, 20, to September 2020, you had planned a tour with Rage and Grave Digger. Mm -hmm. uh, how has it, how, uh, has it been resch uh, rescheduled? Um, yeah, the thing is, uh, I mean, actually, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know how to answer this, <laughs> this question because, I mean, it's obvious that it had to be rescheduled due to the pandemic. And uh, we actually wanted to reschedule that uh, to April this year, but Gravedigger and Rage didn't have the time. So we had to look for other supports. And um, then, I mean, we, we, like ever since, we wanted to go with uh, Brothers of Metal and Wind Rose. Um, so that worked out for the April tour this year. But this had to re be rescheduled now once again to February 2022. Um, so I think that is realistic. February next year, that could really work out. But I don't see any shows happening right now. And if that was your question, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. maybe maybe we can uh, we will do that again with Grave Digger and Rage because a lot of people really like the idea of that lineup. Um, so once uh, shows are possible again, maybe we will go and invite Grave Digger and Rage back uh, on a tour. Uh, yeah, let's see. But this is also one thing that I really like about Orden Ungarn is that we can also yeah, go and do a package with like the seasoned veterans, you know, like the silver haired guys and have a lot of silver haired guys in the audience as well. Um, but we can also go like with the super young modern bands uh, that are out there right now, like with Brothers of Metal and Windrose. And we also had to unleash the archers uh, as uh, the opening act on our gunman tour in 2017. Um, so uh, I think this is uh, this is great. That really shows how diverse uh, the audience is uh, for Orden Ogan, and uh, this is really great. Uh, you have now almost twenty-five years of career and thereabout. What can your fans still expect from you? Uh, okay, first thing, um, twenty-five years is uh, not correct because there's so much bullshit in the internet, and uh, this is like uh, completely wrong. You know, the the, the we really count the history from Orden Ogan from 2008 on when, when the Veil vale record was released. Oh. That was basically the starting of the professional band that you know right now. Um, you can read in the internet Orden Ogan was founded in 1996. I mean, 1996, I was 15 years old and got my first guitar. You know, so uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, uh, it is correct. Uh, the name was around back then. So we had, uh, we already came up with that name when we were kids, you know, going to school. But the only thing that we did was we were hanging out, eating pizza and uh, doing, <laughs> trying to learn our instruments. And I think one, one of the things that really bites us in our asses right now is that we, in the first interviews that we did, uh, because we always uh, were making fun of, ah, oh, we should go to that, and that uh, magazine and tell them some bullshit, you know. And so we always uh, went to the magazines and uh, told like some weird, weird stuff like that. 
that there was a band before Orden Ogern even with the name Tanzende Eingeweide, which is German for dancing entrails. And um, I mean, how old would we have been doing that band? Like nine, eight years old or what? You know? like <laughs> it's, uh, so uh, yeah, we were, we were also like telling a lot of bullshit back then, but it is really stuck in the internet. You really find that, that stuff on uh, Wikipedia and stuff. And yeah, so really, um, I mean, we did some demos back then, uh, Testimonium in 2004 and stuff, but the band was really split up um, in 2000 seven or six i don't really remember and then we refounded the band and actually we were thinking about changing the name as well and uh but uh, that was in 2008 when veil was released and when it came out via a record label and with a, a booking agency and all that kind of stuff and uh, so that is the professional band that you know right now so it's actually not that long it's not like going yeah. to be 13 years now and um but what can fans, fans expect you know the thing is like i told you before i do that mainly for myself i i do that because i love doing this music and i think this is what fans of Orden organ really can feel that it is a lot of love and passion going into these products it's not not just a product it is it is uh, what i want to do for myself i really have to like the record you know and um so i i do think that regardless of the success even if we had uh, just uh, 40 listeners on, on Spotify and instead of uh, 424,000 or whatever we have right now, uh, I would still do records and I would still do this kind of music just because I love to. I would have to do a day job and, you know, like do something else. I don't know, uh, being a music teacher or <laughs> whatever, um, but I would still do that. So uh, I think, uh, I, I mean, the good thing is Orden Ogan keeps developing. You can always hear that it is an Orden Ogan record, but uh, I mean, unless other bands, uh, unless other bands, I think we take a lot of time to make everything be like in the right way. And this is why our records from time to time also like take three or even now three and a half years since Gunman, for example, you know. Um, but I, I don't think that that uh, that all the records sound the same. There's a constant evolution from record to record, and uh, yeah, I think it's great. I think we will keep going, keep evolving, and uh, come up with uh, lots of funny other concepts. I think we are just getting started, and um, I am not really sure about the next one that will come after Gunman. But I was thinking about a Russian a nuclear submarine, maybe. That could be a nice concept. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, right now, are you included in uh, some other project? Or is Orden Ogan your only band? Um, uh, there is something else going on, uh, but I can really talk about that right now. Oh, okay. uh, but you, you, will, you will hear that later on. And yeah, also, I mean, of course, I've got my, my studio. told you that before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Do you want to send any message to your Portuguese fans? Yes, totally. Uh, I mean, first of all, we, we'd love to be back there. I think we have been in your beautiful country just once. I think with, uh, yeah, we have been the support uh, for, for Gravedigger. We have been the support for Gravedigger in uh, 2011. And then we've been there. And so, I mean, I think um, like the, the final days tour, the first thing, the first tour like that is planned right now, that is just a very quick tour. And we also have just one show in the UK, just one in France and nothing even in Spain. Um, and I think there will be longer legs afterwards as soon as touring is possible again. So we definitely like to do more shows um, in France, more in Spain, and maybe then uh, we can even make it uh, into your beautiful country. That would be great. And um, my message, uh, and, and this is really important, I say that in every interview right now, so I would really like to, thanks for giving me the opportunity. I think um, the most important thing right now is for everyone to stay healthy, you know. Um, I mean, it might not be the, the most dangerous virus on earth, but it's surely not harmless. I mean, I don't want to have it. Uh, so I'm, I'm super cautious as well. Um, and uh, I think the most important thing uh, to say is like, really uh, don't give up, you know, because uh, I'm, I mean, with the economy going down and you, there are a lot of people losing their, losing uh, jo their jobs and like doing not really okay. And 
uh, getting you know, overwhelmed by depression and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's in a lot of countries with a lot of people that I'm talking to right now. Uh, a lot of people are really losing their hope, you know, like what I said, with, with the economy going down and stuff. And the, the one thing that I really want to say, it's, it's, it's uh, don't jump out of the window or do like stupid stuff. It, it will not be, you know, it will get better at a certain point. Uh, th this is not uh, so. This is not the final days, yeah. If you want to put it like that, <laughs> uh, it will get better at a certain point, even if, if it might be uh, not not cool right now. But uh, yeah, one thing to make it really get better is, I mean, of course, if you get the new Orden Organ record, then you will feel a lot better as well. <laughs> so you <laughs> may, should definitely do that. Obviously, as well. yeah. But no, really, I, I think uh, to be in to be serious, it, it's not worth like giving up hope, even if you. I mean, I know it's it's terrible. I, I I mean, I am in the lucky position that I have got my studio, you know, so that I can can work my my, my studio stuff. But as for Orden Ogan, I mean, we were not able to tour, or will not be able to tour for two and a half years now, or whatever, you know. So uh, that is obviously uh, not exactly the best situation, like for an artist. Um, so, but still, it's it's not uh, it's not worth it to. Um, to to be like super depressed or whatever it will be will be back better like at, at a certain point in time okay thank you once more thank you thanks for the interview have a nice day you too